In this video, we're going to start setting up our game manager so that we can test the board manager script that we just wrote. Let's select our two scripts and add them to the game manager. Next, let's open our game manager script in MonoDevelop. In Game Manager, we're going to add a public variable of the type board manager called board script. We're also going to add a private variable of the type int called level and initialize it to 3. We're using 3 because we're going to want to test level 3 because that's where the enemies appear. We'll change start to awake. In awake, we're going to do two things. We're going to get and store a component reference to our board manager script and we're also going to call the init game function. Let's declare init game. In init game, we're going to call the setup scene function of board script. When we do this, we'll pass in the parameter level so that we can tell board script what level the scene that we're setting up is so it can determine the number of enemies. With that done, let's save our script and return to the editor. Back in the editor, it's time to assign the variables of our board manager script. Let's highlight the game manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock the inspector so that we can then click on multiple prefabs and drag them into our arrays here. Let's lock the inspector by clicking the lock button up here. And now what we can do, we'll start by dragging in the exit because that's first. Next, we're going to shift click to select all eight of our floor tile prefabs, and we're going to drag those directly onto the floor tiles array. This is going to allow us to add all of them at once without losing focus. Next, we'll do the wall tiles. Select wall one, shift click on wall eight, drag them to the wall tiles array. We'll do the food tiles. In this case, I'm going to click on the food prefab and then command click on the soda prefab because I'm on a Mac. If we were on a PC, that would be control click to add to the selection. We'll drag those to our food tiles array. Let's grab our two enemy tiles. And finally, our outer wall tiles. With those set, Let's unlock the inspector and give it a test. Great. So we can see that our levels are being spawned. We can see that the camera is a little out of position. So let's just fix that quickly. We'll set the X to 3.5 and the Y to 3.5. We'll also set the background to black. With that done, let's play the scene and give it a test. And so there we have it, our exit, our floor background, food items being spawned, inner and outer walls being spawned, and our enemies being spawned as well. We're going to add some functionality to our game manager script to make our game manager what's called a singleton. A singleton is an object for which there can only be one instance in the game at any given time. Since the game manager is going to do things like loading levels, managing the player's score, we wouldn't want more than one of these objects to exist, so in our code we're going to make sure that that's not possible. Let's open the game manager in MonoDevelop. To set up our game manager as a singleton, we're going to add a public static variable of the type game manager called instance and initialize it to null. Declaring instance as public means that it will be accessible from outside the class. Declaring it as static means that the variable will belong to the class itself as opposed to an instance of the class. This means that we can now access the public functions and variables of our game manager from any script in our game. In awake, we're going to check if instance is equal to null, and if it is, we're going to assign it to this. If that's not the case, and instance is not equal to this, 
we're going to destroy this so that we don't accidentally end up with two instances of our game manager. We're also going to set our game manager to don't destroy on load. Don't destroy on load means that when we load a new scene, normally all of the game objects in the hierarchy will be destroyed. Because we want to use the game manager to keep track of the score between scenes, we don't want it to be destroyed at that point. And so we're going to use don't destroy on load to make sure that it will persist between scenes. Let's save our script and return to the editor. Now that we've added the scripts that we need to our game manager, let's drag it down to our prefabs folder to create a prefab. Before we're finished, we're going to need one more simple script, which is going to load the game manager when the game starts. We're going to go to scripts and create a new script called loader. Loader is a very simple script that's just going to check if a game manager has been instantiated and if not, instantiate one from our prefab. We're going to add a public game object called game manager. We're going to change our start to an awake. In awake, we're going to check if game manager.instance is equal to null. Here, we're using the static variable that we created in the game manager script and accessing it from our loader script. If it is equal to null, we're going to instantiate our game manager prefab. We can delete the update function because we're not going to use it. And that's all we need for now. Now, in the editor, we can delete our game manager from the hierarchy and add our loader script to the main camera. With our loader script added, we'll drag in our game manager prefab. Now, we can test our scene. Now that we've got our game manager started and we can lay out some levels, it's time to get our units moving around. In the next video, we're going to write a script called Moving Object to do that.